You want to see the good stuff you don't see? There's some stuff in there I didn't really like, but then again, I'm a fighter. I'm a fan. I didn't like the. Good morning. And thank you to somebody that uh, dropped off a uh, Dr. Doom Sonic screwdriver keychain for me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. What? Who did that? I don't know. A good fairy. Probably your wife. No. No, she wouldn't have done that. <laughs> she would have tried to use it on me. Why didn't this work? Good morning! Hey, you know what? We played hooky last Sunday. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. I hope all the people here had fun. We do have a couple of patron saints, George Carlin and John Lennon. And John said, I believe that as soon as people want peace in the world, they can have it. Trouble is, they're not aware they can get it. Stop fighting. That would be a good way to start. Um, and then George, have you ever noticed that the lawyer always smiles more than the client? <laughs> Things that make you go, hmm. We confess to little faults only to persuade ourselves that we have no great ones. It is impossible for a man to be cheated by anyone but himself. Ralph Waldo Emerson. And truth is the safest lie. <laughs> so, politicians don't know how to spell that, though. So that's kind of their job. You have to figure out how work right, right? OK. Everybody's quiet this morning. Everybody OK? Or you just want to go outside and play in the sun and have a good time? <laughs> You know, when we first started the church, almost 18 years ago, ooh, um, we were in our first location, and there was this grassy area right out behind the church. And actually, it was this time of year, it was May, and I said something to the effect, it was gorgeous outside. I said, gee, for two cents, I'd take up my chairs and walk outside and go have services outside. And I no sooner turned around and people were picking up their chairs. And we had services outside. It was wonderful. It was absolutely beautiful. So. Oh, can I share a story on that? Uh, sure. <laughs> do you remember what happened? Wait, wait, wait. I, oh, I do. I do. Yeah. It was so cool. It was so cool. We were outside. So we did the guided meditation. And as part of the guided meditation, I said something about um, you have a question on your heart, and now is your time to speak it to, to great spirits, to God, higher power, whatever that is for you. Every bird had been just chirping its head off, silent. <laughs> and then I said, and now you receive your answer back, and the birds just sang. It was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> this white dove, I've never seen white dove in Tri Cities, I'm sure they're here, flew down and sat on the fence during the whole service. As soon as awesome. service was over, it flew off. It was the coolest thing ever. So we've always wanted to have like one of those big giant garage door things that open and we could, uh, maybe down there. <laughs> <laughs> one day maybe, who knows. Um, miners in other parts of the world developed various ways of washing gold-bearing soil by hand. It remained for the United States prospectors, however, to reduce the use of mining pans to a science. Skillful movements could result in surprising efficiency in washing out dirt and impurities. Anybody ever panned for not just gold, but um, like, um, what did we do? We, sat, we panned for sapphires up in the mountains of Montana. Fun stuff. Got a big, I mean, a big old handful of sapphires for a day's worth of work. We actually mounted one of them because it was big enough to send it off and actually get a pass at it. Fun stuff. Yeah, try it. Uh, this process of sifting soon, be, soon compared with critical evaluation of human performance. Just as the miner washed soil away from finding any gold, the critic was sometimes hard put to discover merit in, the drama, in, in drama and literature. When nothing could be said after a production, it was described as panned out. The analyst was said to pan the effort. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's amazing. Huh? There is so much cool stuff in magazines sometimes. This one um, was, what was this in? AARP. It says uh, something. Um, but it's talking about um, stress and how stress 
literally can kill you. And I mean, I've known this for years. I tell people all the time, look right at them across my desk and say, you know, stress will kill you. Stop. I mean, seriously, it's, it's bad stuff. Anyway, it goes through the whole human body and tells you the effects of stress on different parts of the body. But mo I'm just going to throw out a few of them. Your eyes, uh, risk of te uh, te tinnitus and hearing loss. Your esophagus, acid reflux. Your liver, type 2 diabetes. Your brain, headaches, insomnia, depression, increased dementia risk. Stop it. <laughs> Or figure out a way to stop it. The term weapons of mass destruction was coined in 1937 to describe aerial bombings in the Spanish Civil War. Yeah, not a new word. And something else was in Parade Magazine this morning. Actually, it was about Tom Brokaw. And um, interesting guy, interesting guy. But he's talking about luck, and he's led this lucky life. And he goes into a little bit about why he considers it lucky and what he's done to make it lucky. And then they go on afterwards and talk about some things about luck and such. Uh, increase your odds. If you try more things, more good things will happen. Um, if you try 30 new things at the end of the year, you might count 15 good things that have happened to you. But if you wait to try things only when you're sure of success, you might count three or four good things that happened to you during the year. So I got a bazillion things that happened good to me. I mean, I do. I really do. Because I just do all kinds of goofy stuff. Um, let it go. Research shows that a genetic variation in the brain makes some people naturally less anxious and better able to forget bad experiences. The unlucky tend to be data collectors for bad experiences, remembering every detail of negative events and weighing them all equally. So losing out at a, on a great parking spot becomes just as awful as losing your mother's heirloom diamond ring. Don't stop it. Um, I have other jokes, but I must have left them in the office. Thank you, Jan. I don't know how I did that, but in the meantime, we'll just go ahead and put this down. <clears throat> A good cure for the blues is go out and dig in the dirt. Yes, I mean, get your hands dirty, feel the warm soil. It's great. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Two old ladies, Connie and Evelyn, were sitting on a park bench outside the local town hall where a flower show was in progress. The short one, Connie, leaned over and said, Life is so boring. We never have any fun anymore. For $10, I take all my clothes off and streak through the stupid, boring flower show. You're on, said Evelyn, holding up a $10 bill. So Connie slowly fumbled her way out of her clothes. She grabbed a dried flower from a nearby display and held it between her teeth, then completely naked streaked, streaked as fast as an old lady can. Through the front door of the flower show, waiting outside, her friend soon heard a huge commotion inside the hall, followed by a loud applause and shrill whistling. Finally, the smiling Connie came through the exit door, surrounded by cheering, clapping crowd. What happened? asked Evelyn. I won $1,000 as the first prize for the best dried arrangement. <laughs> All right, we'll do this one too. A group of seniors were sitting around talking about all their ailments at Witherspoons. My arms have got so weak I can hardly lift my cup of coffee, said one. Yeah, I know, said another. My cataracts are so bad, even I, I, I can't even see my coffee. I couldn't even mark an X at election time because my hands were so crippled, volunteered a third. What? Speak up. What? What? I can't hear you, said another old, old lady. I can't turn my head because my arthritis in my neck, said one, to which several <coughs> nodded weakly in, in agreement. My blood pressure pills make me so dizzy, exclaimed another. I forgot where I am and, or where I'm going, said another. I guess that's the price we pay for getting old, winced an old man as he slowly shook his head. The others nodded in agreement. Well, 
Count your blessings, said another woman cheerfully. Thank God we still can drive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With that one, let's sing a song. Yeah. This is an old Eric Clapton song. <laughs> Can't hear you. That work? Nope, nope. Nope. We got enough? Oh, sure, this should be fine. It's just a short ways out of date. Okay. <laughs> so we get down to Dayton and we kind of cruise around. We had just stopped and had a cup of coffee and just relaxing. Got back in the car and found the turn off. Went the wrong way and had to come back and get the turn. <clears throat> and we drove. And we drove. We drove some more. And there was still no again. So we just passed a ranger park, ranger station. We don't let the dog out, let her run around for just a minute. So we did that. You could hear the river, but we didn't dare walk because it needed a day pass for the part. It was like, we don't have a day pass. And the ranger station is right there. This is not a good idea. So we thought, well, you know, we can't go any further and get back. Because we didn't know where the gas stations were. So. Phil got a little frustrated, I got a little frustrated. Dog was born. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lesson in yeah. <laughs> So we got back in the car and thought, well, we, we're going to have to go back to the Coa campground and get gas before we can even get back to Dayton. So we did that. Stopped and got gas. So on the way back to the, to the little campground, oh, I started to get really mad. I should have made Phil stop and get gas. Should have done it. He should have. He should have had a full tank of gas. And Phil's getting more frustrated. She should have told me it was further than that. <laughs> <laughs> so we were kind of. Uh, we didn't say it. We just thought. We were, uh, <laughs> later we talked to each other. Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> so we we started to head into the Coa campground. You know, <laughs> about about the same time. You know, we both thought. Well, you know. This is what is. We just got to get over it. And so we kind of just kind of, because so, sometimes when you're all spun up like that, I call that the psychic spin cycle. Just over and over and over and over and you're not ever going to get happy. But it also shuts down your perceptions and your awarenesses. So there was a couple of picnic tables. And we thought, well, we'll just sit here and have a lunch owner of the campground said, sure, just go ahead. So we brought we, our lunch. We, we brought our lunch, because that's what we were going to do. So we dragged our stuff out, and it's like, oh, it's a cute little bridge. Let's, let's just look what's on the inside of the bridge. Let's do a little quick walk. It's a cute little stream. Adorable little stream. Perfect little stream. And they walked across the little bridge, and there were these lovely little camp areas where you could sit and have your little picnic lunch. And the sun was just the dappled sunlight through the trees. It was a little bit of a breeze. You could hear the wind in the, in the trees. And it was just absolutely lovely. 
birds were singing. And then it occurred to us that sometimes we don't get what we want, but we get exactly what we need. My soul needed that little quiet campground. Not a rushing river, but a little quiet campground. My soul needed that little stream and the little birdie singing. And apparently Phil's did too. But if we had stayed spun up and upset, we would have only have seen just the little picnic benches that were right there. We would not have seen the other little area beyond that because we would have been locked down and shut down. So we had, we had an issue with being frustrated. Now, frustration happens. Just one of those things. Can't help it. How long we stay in that state of being, in that state of mind, that's the key. That's the key. And what helps us shift out of that spin cycle, and this spin cycle consists of shoulda, coulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda, oughta, gotta, must, have to, always, and never. <laughs> if you hear yourself say any of those, not necessarily in that order, you're in your spin cycle. And that spin cycle is this mental thing. Blah, 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 blah. Make you nuts. When you drop out of that and into your heart space, with this is what is, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna find a blessing and enjoy it in that. Oh my gosh, all kinds of things open up. I'm like, Phil was talking about the, uh, the Dan Brokaw uh, article, where you try 30 different things. If we're locked down with despair and what it should look like, we lose track of what could happen, what might be there, because we get all shut down. There is an immutable truth, an immutable fact, that I want us to get here. And that is, you will get what is necessary, what is important, and what your heart desires, even if it's not what you want. I have a, have a, have a truth to share with you today. This one, start here. Not that one. <laughs> oh, please. Don't you like it? Oh, there's only one more. But I got that. See, yeah, there's some purpose for that. I don't know what that was. Where's your mommy? I think she's in the other room. <laughs> She'll help you find your mommy. Here we are. Psalms 37. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That is a truth with a capital T. It always works. There's that always. But it's true. It's a truth. Capital T truth. Not my truth. It's the truth that you can count on. When you can count on that truth, then everything becomes just stuff. Just stuff. And when you find the autogata shoulds have to always never, they, and you find yourself caught in that spin cycle, it's easier to slip out of that spin cycle and back into your heart space when you know that this is the truth. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You may not get what you want, but what you want may not be what's best for you at this moment in time. And when you can trust that, things change. Trust. You know, I'm just having all kinds of fun. Huh. Here it is. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Get in your heart space, not your head. Head's all about rationale and logic and reasoning. And the head can hold all kinds of stuff. Like, I'm always, I never can find a parking place. I've lost this and this is not good and there's some terrible things happening. But when we're all focused on that kind of stuff, we miss out on the good stuff. Because <laughs> there's no delight in that. Now, with that said, 
there was a little bit of guilty thrill in making it all Phil's fault. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a little bit of guilty joy in making it all the ladies' fault who gave us the directions. If we can let go of that kind of fun, that opens us up to the real fun in life. Because that kind of joyfulness or taking pleasure in that sort of thing is non-productive. doesn't give us anything. It locks us down and shuts us down. But to be able to let that go requires us to be in this place of trust. Doggone it. Well, what is trust? Trust is saying, I don't have to have all the answers. Trust is saying, I don't have to know what it's supposed to look like. Trust is saying, it's all good. No matter what's going on, it's all good. And when we have that trust, miracles happen. They really happen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. And here's one of my favorite verses in the whole world. I love this verse. This is also from the Proverbs. The path of the righteous is like the dawn of the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. So you don't have to know where you're going. You know how in the in the early morning it's like it's that twilight time, it's not real clear. You can see a little ways ahead of you. Keep going. Because it's going to get brighter. Your path is going to get clearer. Your way, your journey is going to get brighter. So just keep going. Verse 23. Watch over your heart with all diligence. For from it flow the springs of life. Watch out. Watch out. Because when we're not in our heart space, we're in our head space. And that's where stress happens. And then stress goes through the whole body. <clears throat> But when we're in our heart space and we're finding that delight of the Lord, whatever that is for you, when you're trusting that process, then your heart has the power to say, oh, there's a bridge. <clears throat> Let's cross it and see what we can find. Let's try something else. Let's do one more thing. And that's where delight comes in. Then you're so magnificently blessed. And that blessing, um, it's one of those pivot point moments in your life. You won't ever forget it. It's kind of like having, uh, when we did the guided meditation at the first place and we all went outside and, <coughs> and you're asking, you're putting your question out to spirit and the birds were silent. Things are never the same. You can never forget that. The key is being open to allowing it to come to you. The key is for us to get out of that spin cycle. Oh my gosh, that spin cycle could have been ruined all day. And it didn't. We went there. It's human nature. But how long do we stay there? That's the key. That's the key. It wasn't Phil's responsibility to get me out of that spin cycle. It wasn't my responsibility to get him out of the spin cycle. My job to get me out of the spin cycle. And let him be where he needed to be. Give him sacred ground. And take whatever time it took. Fortunately, we just happened to shift at the same time. It was really lovely. Of course, we've been married forever. <laughs> <laughs> Almost forever. So what do you get caught up in this spin cycle about? What's your spin cycle today? Where do you get caught up? Because being in that spin cycle is keeping you from some blessing that's right here, right now. So let's do a little guided meditation, shall we?